Uh, practice, practice, practice. Now that's a, I guess, a long road. I did my undergraduate in uh, University of King's College in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is a um, liberal arts college attached to a larger research institution. So it's one of these great books programs. But the great books program kind of opened up my eyes to a whole world of philosophy and literature and uh, ancient science that I just hadn't seen before and it got me thinking about really engaging with historical uh, historical sources a lot more and from that I then majored in classics and contemporary studies so I got to do that literary criticism, modern literary criticism alongside uh, classics, which was my other major. So I did a lot of history of science on the modern side of things, and then a lot of Plato and Aristotle and serious men thinking serious thoughts kind of stuff on the, on the classic side. Um, and from there, I went to, did a master's in Halifax at the research institution called Dalhousie uh, on Socratic irony. Then I went to Columbia, where I did a PhD, and eventually found, found my way back into history of science style projects. Um, so that's, I guess that's sort of how I ended up where I am. Uh, trying to do everything simultaneously and then somehow jamming it all into, into a, a research field. Uh, I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player, obviously. Um, I was convinced that I was going to be a baseball player. I practiced in the winter, had training regimens uh, that I would go through field ground balls, hit against a, a wall, uh, and at a certain point early in my career, around the age of 12 or 13, uh, that dream receded into non-existence, and then I thought I would be something more realistic, which was a theoretical physicist, uh, or a stockbroker. It was going to be one of the two, either be extremely wealthy or solve uh, the world's mysteries, and uh, I guess both are still still dreams after I finish with this classics thing. I guess. Yeah, I don't want to reveal that. I have to think back to those undergraduate days which were uh, wonderful and terrible simultaneously. I think my worst habit was that I spent too much time in the library, that I was convinced um, that I needed to know everything at that moment, and I spent a lot of time just consuming books, which was great. It, it has done me, I mean, it's the reason why I'm uh, in my career, because I enjoy doing that, but there were certain times when I should have just gone and done some fun stuff, like uh, road trips and these type of things, which I spent, no, I had to, there was something I needed to do in the library. So that was a habit that is, I still haven't broken. <laughs> It is a career that allows you to get curious about something and then find, gives you the time to actually investigate it, uh, the institutional support to investigate it, and the opportunity to share what you find with other people. And that is an incredible thing. That, sure, it is a job uh, that has its bureaucratic side, um, like any other job, you know, it is a job, you have to do some work, uh, but part of that Part of the career is that you um, you get to be curious, and that's uh, an incredible gift. The thing I wish I knew is that you forget stuff, and you forget stuff at an alarming rate. That I am in classics, you know, because the field is fascinating, because the people who populate the ancient world are fascinating, because it's a moment where a lot of the disciplines we take for granted are formed and have to be formed. Uh, no one knows what you're talking about yet, so you have to uh, figure out what things like medicine are and how you can, what, what it means to you as a practicing physician, um, how you convince people to come and uh, and take your services seriously, these type of things. But I'm also in classics because I thought I would go back to the beginning and then read my way back to the contemporary world. So I would, you know, sure there would be some areas that I didn't know particularly well, but I would essentially know everything uh, in rough form. And not only is that not even remotely possible in a single lifetime, um, 
you forget so much of what you read and so much of what you learn and you have to constantly relearn things. Now that's good because it gives you a chance to learn things better and look at them um, with a different perspective. You know, the things that you really love you just need to focus in uh, a little bit more intently on those. Uh, so that's, that's what I wish I knew. Hmm. Right now I am working on uh, a few different projects, one of which ties into the course that I'll be teaching for the Honor Seminar, and that's about uh, the, book, say, the sonics or the soundscape of ancient medicine. So just what it sounded like to be, to go to a doctor, to be healed. There were people using incantations and songs in religious contexts. There were doctors who were hitting on your stomach and listening to your cough, these type of things. So just um, the sensory experience of going to a physician or going to other alternative healers in antiquity. Sound marks different healthcare spaces. You can think of doctor's offices that play horrendous music uh, versus going into a new age uh, healthcare space where they're playing chants or whale music or something a little bit like that sounds different and that means something different in terms of your relationship to um, healthcare. So that's one thing. The other thing I'm working on is data visualization in antiquity. So how, how we'll say scientists or physicians or any number of people engaging with the world try to collect and make what we would consider data um, and that can be plants, that can be medicinal qualities, that can be um, star charts, all, all manner of uh, what we, we would consider data broadly understood. How they manipulate, organize, and propagate data in useful forms in a society without the printing press. Oh, um, I read a lot of books, so I haven't kicked the habit of, uh, but I read fiction, so that's, that's a fun thing. Um, do a bit of hiking, because we're in California, so there are a lot of trails. Um, but the thing I've been doing as of late, probably a little bit too much of, is watching baseball. It's very hard for me to pick a favorite book. I've given it a lot of thought, and my favorite book is The Iliad. It's actually uh, good that I'm a classicist. It's probably the most powerful book I've ever read, and it continues to be powerful every time I not only read it, read it but also talk about it. I find myself tearing up, <laughs> which is a strange book, a strange thing to, to same strange reaction to a book that's largely about people smashing each other's faces in with beers and stuff like that. So there's an incredible range of human emotion that gets portrayed in that book. And, um, I find it extremely moving. I don't like chewing sounds, so I'm a big chew with your mouth close kind of guy. And I know that's a boring one because, um, I mean, first of all, no one gets to eat in any of my classes. If you're starving and your blood sugar is dropping and you're diabetic, sure, then you can eat in the class. But uh, uh, generally, I just don't let people eat. Um, and that extends from the classroom to my general life where I. It just, that's the thing that gets me more than anything else. Gum chewing, Ugh, all of it, all of it just makes my skin crawl. I would probably pick the ability to stop time uh, just for myself, or maybe for other people. If it's a superpower, I can stop time for whoever I want. There's just too much in the world that is interesting that you want to investigate. Um, and it feels like time passes far too quickly to be able to do that. Uh, and also life is phenomenally short. And sometimes you think, this is, you know, we've, you go through these moments where you work a lot and sometimes you have fun and you think, you know, either one of those, uh, there are moments when you think, I would just love to be able to just, just sit right here for a little bit longer and that would be an incredible superpower to be able to have. 
the ion, like Plato is great on this, where he doesn't say this outright because he's Socrates, but you're eventually led as a reader to see that just being able to recite something doesn't give you access to its true meaning, that there's something else that allows you to say what a book means and what a book doesn't mean. And unfortunately, uh, I'm in the position of not being able to memorize quotes all that well. The, you know, the models that I um, live by are generally be generous and be kind. Um, and generosity extends to a lot of different aspects, one of which is not, you know, it has a lot to do with listening to other people and being generous in not taking offense at everything that people say. That really trying, you know, when people say things, they're generally not out to be mean. Um, so really trying to look for the good or the understand why people are saying what they're saying, even if you disagree vehemently with what they're saying. So that's something I try to live by. Be generous, I guess.